I'm here to show you how to do the GCSE required practical on density and we're going to be finding the density of three different types of objects today. Regular objects, that is objects that you can measure the dimensions of and then calculate their volume, that is the space that they take up. We have irregular objects and also liquids. So what is density? Well, density is how heavy a material is, but of course it depends on how much of that material you have. How do we calculate density? We take the mass of an object and we divide it by the volume of the object. Now mass is measured in kilograms or grams, we're going to be working in grams, and volume is measured in meters cubed or centimeters cubed, and we're going to be working in centimeters cubed today. So that means that the unit for density is grams per centimeter cubed. It's how much mass does one centimeter cubed of that material have. So let's start with some regular objects. Here I have three cuboids. Well, I have aluminium, I have brass and iron. So first of all, we need to get the mass of one of these objects. I'm going to go for the brass. So make sure that your balance is teared first or zeroed. So it reads zero before you put your object on there. So let's pop our brass block on there. Now I can see that this brass block has a mass of 180 0.0 grams. It's okay if your balance doesn't give you tenths of grams. Next, we need to find the volume of this block, and we're going to measure the three sides of it, height, width, and length. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Yes, you can use your normal ruler. So, measuring the length, I can see that that is five centimeters. The width of it is two centimeters. Finally, the height of it again is two centimeters. So how do we calculate the volume of a cuboid? It's all three of these multiplied together. So five times two times two gives us 20 centimeters cubed. Calculating the density, we have our mass of 180 grams, divide that by the volume, which is 20 centimeters cubed, and that gives us a density of nine grams per centimeter cubed. Now, there is another piece of equipment that you can use, and that is called vernier caliper. They can measure to a precision greater than one millimeter. In this case, this vernier caliper can measure to the nearest 0.05 millimeters. Let's measure the aluminum cube with the vernier caliper. So open the jaws, and then squeeze them until they meet the block. Now we want to see, forget about the top line because that's inches, we only care about millimetres and centimetres, we're going to see where the zero on our bottom scale lines up on our top scale. And I can see that that goes all the way past 1.8 centimetres. Can you see that the zero has not gone past 1.9 centimetres? So we know that whatever the width of this cube is, it's going to be 1.8 centimetres plus a little bit more, and that's where our bottom scale comes in. What we want to look at is which line on the bottom scale lines up best with the top scale. So let's have a look at our lines. I can see that it's the number 9 on the bottom scale that best lines up with a line on the top scale. So that means that we have 9 tenths of a millimeter extra. So what does that mean that our final width is? It's 1.8 centimeters, so that's 18 millimeters plus another 0.9 millimeters, that's 9 tenths. So what's our final width? 1.89 centimeters. So that's our regular objects. What about irregular objects? What about this mass here? Well, this isn't very easy to measure the volume of, is it? because it's a hexagon and it's not a prism either, because we can see that it's getting wider as we go down the mass. And we have this loop as well. So there really isn't a way that we can just measure and calculate the volume. What we can use is one of these. This is called a Eureka can. So named because Archimedes is a Greek scientist, so the legend goes when he jumped into a bath full of water, he realized that the volume of water that he displaced was the same as his volume, to which he shouted Eureka. And we're going to be using the same principle here. What we're going to do is fill up this can all the way to this hole that's inside 
of the can. So what we're going to do is fill this up so it just starts dripping out of this little nozzle here. And that means that the water inside is at the same level as that hole. So that means that whatever we put into the water then, it's going to displace the same amount of water as its volume. So I'm filling up my Eureka can or displacement can, and I'm gonna fill it until it just starts dripping out. There you go. Now you're gonna wait until it stops dripping, and then you can put another empty beaker underneath to catch the water when we displace it. So while we're waiting for that to stop dripping, we're going to tie a piece of string to our mass so we can easily place it under the water level and get it out easily as well afterwards. Now what you wanna do is put your empty beaker underneath the nozzle, and then you're going to lower very carefully your mass so it goes underneath the water level. So what you don't wanna do is make a splash because that means that more water is gonna be displaced than should be. So if I pop my mass under the water level, just underneath, including the loop, I'm gonna wait until it stops dripping, and then I'm going to lift my mass out again. Now I have the volume of water that was displaced by my mass. Now I can see from my beaker that I have over 100 milliliters or 100 centimeters cubed of water here. So I'm gonna need a fairly big measuring cylinder for this. So here we go. I'm gonna pop my water in here, making sure that all of the water goes in. So I'm getting as accurate reading as possible. And getting on eye level and looking at the meniscus, that's the bottom of the bulge of the water. I can see that it comes to exactly 130 centimeters cubed. Now this is a one kilogram mass or a 1000 gram mass. So that means to calculate the density, I take the mass of 1000 grams, divide it by the volume, which was 130 centimeter cubed. And that gives me a density of 7.7 .7 grams per centimeter cubed. Finally, we can measure the density of a liquid. This is really easy to do. All we need is a measuring cylinder and the liquid goes in here and we need our balance. What we do is turn our balance on and then we place our measuring cylinder on it. Now, of course, this has a mass of its own, so we need to tear or zero the balance before adding the liquid. Now I'm going to add some water. Now it doesn't really matter how much you add, so long as you measure the volume accurately. So I can see that that is 50 centimeters cubed. That's the same as 50 milliliters. And that gives me a mass of 50 grams. That gives us a density of 1.0 grams per centimeter cubed, which makes sense because pure water should have a density of exactly one gram per centimeter cubed. Here I have a sugar solution. Let's see what mass we have for 50 centimeters cubed this time. So getting on eye level and going to the meniscus, that's the bottom of the bulge, I can see that we have a mass of 54.4. So the density is 54.4 grams divided by 50 centimeters cubed, and that gives me a density of 1.1 gram per centimeters cubed. So that means that every centimeter cubed has more mass than pure water does. That means it's more dense. Now, what's the difference between these densities? Well, water had one, this sugar solution had 1.1. So that means that in every centimeter cubed of water, we have 0.1 grams of sugar dissolved. Now, when we give concentrations of compounds dissolved in water, we can say how many grams we dissolve per centimeter cubed, but often we give it in grams per decimeter cubed. Now a decimeter is just 10 centimeters, and because it's decimeters cubed, that means that we have to do that three times. That means that there are 10 times 10 times 10 centimeters cubed in a decimeter cubed. That's 1,000 centimeters cubed in a decimeter cubed. So if there's 0.1 grams of sugar dissolved in one centimeter cubed of water, times that by 1,000, and that means that we used 100 grams of sugar per decimeter cubed. 